I worked for DuPont before I came here as a professor. So I knew a little bit about color. And then I know that blue is the most difficult color to make. Uh, so immediately when I saw the blue color, I said, wow, what's going on here? My name is Moss Subramanian. Uh, I'm a faculty in chemistry department. Uh, I have a title called Milton Harris Chair of Material Science. Most of the research focuses on discovering new materials for electronics, environment. Well, I heard about Julie Green's work before even I discovered the pigment because she was having these blue plates, you know, the Last Supper. So I knew about her work. And after this discovery was publicized by the Oregon State University, she contacted me and asked me whether I could give you a, a lecture in her class. I mean, to read about him in the New York Times and then ride my bike a mile and, and see that, it's a pretty uh, great thing about Oregon State. This year, this fall, um, when I was teaching New Genre, I contacted Moss and we were able to get enough of the pigment that the students saw were, were to make a small painting. And so they got to come to the lab and learn about the pigment and then make egg temper painting. So they did these studies and then they, a few of the advanced painters did a, a follow-up paintings too. What I borrow from, from the scientific uh, experience or view or way of approaching a problem is that capacity to step back and have objective looks at, at all sides of what you're producing. I'm also interested in that dance of being fully engaged with the process, but also if you're doing it right, you don't have the final destination, you're just pushing yourself to keep dancing. Sometimes the journey is more important than the destination. You, you may want to go someplace, but suddenly you see something and say, wow, I want to take a detour and then go and see this, what is it? Then you just sometimes stop there and do more things there than the, one, the destination. So whenever my students say, the experiment didn't work. I always ask them, what do you mean it doesn't work? Something has happened. Did you look into that more carefully? Because you don't know. Maybe you have made something better than what you are looking for. <laughs> you know, what, it, what its value is for me as a painter who is really into creating space by using color rather than, you know, line or, or any sort of other like depth tools that it's invaluable. I mean, I've long since left behind any notion of thinking that art and science were really very different to begin with. And um, I kind of think about, you know, the process of what they went through as being very similar to what we're doing in a lot of ways. We're like constantly engaging in these inquiries, cataloging what we find and pushing ourselves into new grounds. It's really research and hypothesis based. Uh, like I, I wonder what would happen if I'll just keep doing this. So it's, it's running tests all the time. They begin with some ideas and then they keep on cooking it because they are, oh, this looks better than what I thought. So they move. So the same thing in science, we do the same thing. We took science to discover new things. Sometimes the journey is the most important thing. So I always tell my students, we are looking for a holy grail. That journey to find that holy grail may not be successful, but at the same time, the journey itself is worth taking it. Yeah.